So guys, today we are going to talk on a topic called as ETL testing or BI reporting testing. So the first thing we are going to learn is ETL testing. So ETL testing full form is extract, transform, and load testing. So extract means what? We have to extract the data from the source system. So this is part one. Extract means we have to extract the data from the source system. Now, next thing is transform. Transform means change the data as per business requirement. And the last thing is load. Load means what? We have to load the data in data warehouse. Okay, so this is the three things. First is extract the data from the source system, then is transform the uh, data as per the business requirement, and last is what? Load the data into the data warehouse. So when I tell, tell that extract the data from the source system, so first thing we have to understand what is a source system. The source system is the first layer, guys. Now the source can be anything. It can be an XML file. It can be a database. It can be an Excel file. Or it can be a simple file having extension dot csv or dot psv csv means comma separated value and psv means pipe separated value So it can be any file, file in, in the sense, it can be any notepad, okay? So this can be also a source. So there are three things. First is what? Four things, which can be the source. It can be an XML file, it can be a database, it can be an Excel file, or it can be a file. A file is a general file, a notepad, okay? Which can have the extension .csv, .psv, and the full form of CSB is comma separated value, PSB is pipe separated value. That means data are separated by comma or data are separated by pipe. So this is our source system. So this data from the source will be extracted, transformed. Transport means it will be changed. It will be changed, data will be changed as per the business requirement, as per the business logic. We can also tell it as as per the business logic, it will be transformed or changed, and then it will be loaded into the data warehouse. And as an ETL tester, we have to test the data as an ETL tester. We need to test the data extracted, transformed, and load it into the data warehouse, into the data warehouse is correct, is correct. So this is the thing. First, what happens? What is ETL testing? It is called as extract, transform, and load testing. Extract means we are extracting the data from the source system. Source system can be an XML file or the uh, database or Excel file or a simple file. We'll transform the data. Transform means it will be changed as per the business logic and loaded into the data warehouse. As an ETL tester, we need to test the data extracted, transformed, and loaded, loaded into the data warehouse is correct or not is correct or not now for these things we have to understand what is a data warehouse what is a data 
smart, what is a database. So those things we will study so that we'll just understand. So to understand this, first we have to understand what is a data warehouse. So as I have told before also, once more I'm telling, data means any meaningful information is called as data. Database is collection of data in the form of tables. Tables is a collection of row and column. Row is also called as tuple or record. Column is also called as attribute. Table is also called as entity and cell is an interaction or intersection of rows and column. A schema is the folder structure in a database. So this is a database. So inside the database, there will be schema. Inside the schema, there will be table. Next thing we have to understand what is a data warehouse and how is it different from the database? So guys, this is a very, very interesting topic and you have to understand what is the difference between data warehouse and database? Both look same, both are uh, resemble same, but they are not same actually. See guys, first you have to understand what is a database. So database is nothing but a datas, okay? In the form of table. Now these datas are transactional data. That means maximum one year data. This is also called as OLTP, online transactional processing data. That means what guys? That means what the database data can be maximum of one year. It can be two months, three months, six months. Maximum it can be of one year. That is nothing but the database. That means what? If a day to day, a day sale is happening for a particular showroom, suppose I take the uh, showroom of Lee. Lee is a jeans which is sold in Marathalli, it is also sold in Hebbel, it is also sold in BTM, it is also sold in Kormangala. So these are the places in Bangalore. Suppose there are four shops where the Lee jeans are getting sold. So now the data, the transaction, what is happening, the sale, what is happening on today, that will be stored in a database. For one month, whatever the sale has happened for Marathalli branch. So Marathalli branch data will be stored in a database, okay, of Marathalli. Now, now again, there's a database, okay, for to store the data which is happening in, or data which are getting sold in, in Core Mangala, like that in Hebbel, like that in BTM. So all these data transactional day-to-day data are getting stored in a database. Now this can be more, uh, the data can be three months, six months, max to max one year, not more than one. Now what happens in data warehouse, all this transactional data, which is day-to-day -day data, one month, two month, three month, six month data, all these data will be stored in a centralized repository called as a data warehouse. So guys, the difference is very, very clear and accurate. It is an integrated data. Data warehouse data is integrated data. Database data is not integrated data. If Marathalli showroom is having the data in the database, where the Marathalli, show, Marathalli, whatever the sale has happened for that particular brand, for that particular uh, jeans. But if we integrate this Marathalli, what is this sale and this core Mangla and this BTM and this Hebbal in a centralized location, then it will become a data warehouse. That means the integrated data is the prime concern of data warehouse. So data warehouse, first of all, is an integrated data. Next, data warehouse data is a historic data, online analytical processing data. Online analytical processing data means two-year data, three-year data, four-year data, five-year data, 10-year data, 100 years of data, 1,000 years of data, that is nothing but your OLAP that will be used for the analysis purpose. So when the data are used for the analysis purpose, that will become what a uh, data warehouse. It's a large scale data. That is not a very small data. And in data warehouse, it's less prone to DML activities. DML means insert, update, and delete. 
this will not happen more in data warehouse because 100 years of data are there. So we will not uh, frequently update or delete in this particular uh, uh, in this particular data warehouse because if we update or delete in this uh, data warehouse, the data might get uh, completely messed up. So it is less prone to DML activities. So this is our difference between a data base and a data warehouse. Database consists of less data. Database consists of transactional data. Database is also called as OLTP, online transactional processing data. The data in database will be maximum of one year. Two month, three month, six month, maximum one year. Data warehouse is a historic data, is a large set of data, and data warehouse is an integrated data. And now we are going to learn about the proper definition of data warehouse. So data warehouse is defined as an subject-oriented, integrated, time-variant, and non-volatile collection of data in support of management decision-making process. So guys, this is a definition of data warehouse. Let us just focus on this particular thing. So a data warehouse is subject-oriented. Subject-oriented means what? Related to a particular subject, like related to a particular sale. So that is nothing but a data warehouse, a particular sale is happening for a particular company, a particular product is getting sold. So that is what nothing but a subject oriented. First of all, the property of a data warehouse is a, is a subject oriented related to a particular subject area. Example sales. Next property of data warehouse is integrated. The data is coming from multiple data uh, database and is stored in a centralized repository. That is called as what data warehouse. So second property is it is an integrated data. The third property is time variant. That means what old data more than one year. Example, 20 year, 30 year, 40 year, 50 year, 100 year, 1000 year. These kind of data are stored in where? In the data warehouse. Next is non-volatile. Non-volatile means since it is having an historic data, so no changes would be done in this data. Since this is a huge data, is a historic data, and if we do any changes in this kind of data, there will be a lot of data will get messed up. So we'll not do update, insert, and all those DML activities. We will not do in the data warehouse because if we do the DML activities in a data warehouse is a historic data of 20 years and the data might get messed up. So we will not do any changes in the data warehouse database. So its name is non-volatile. Since it is a historic data, no changes would be done in this data. So these are the two things, guys. First, you have to understand in ETL testing, first thing is the name is what? extract, transform, and load testing. Here we are extracting the data from the source system, transforming the data as per the business logic, and loading the data into the data warehouse. Then I told you source system, it is XML file, Excel file, file, or database. Then I told you what that the data are loaded into the data warehouse, so there's a difference between a database and a data warehouse. So what I told you guys, that database is what a short-term data. That means that is small data of maximum one year. This is a transactional data, but data warehouse on the other hand is a historic data, is used for analytical processing of data, is a huge data, is a subject-oriented data, is an integrated data, is a time-variant data, that means a more than one year or example 20 years of data are stored in or data warehouse so it's a time variant old data are there and then the last point i told you is non-volatile that means we will not do any dml activities like update insert and delete in this particular data warehouse since it is a huge data 
So this thing is the primary thing when you learn ETL testing and someone asks you what is ETL testing, the first thing you have to explain is this one, stack transform and load testing, extracting from the source system, transforming or changing the data as per business logic and loading the data into the data warehouse is called as ETL testing. We have to make sure the data which has been loaded from the source to the target, target is nothing but your data warehouse, is correct or not. That is the roles and responsibilities of an ETL tester. So guys, this is completely clear. What is an ETL testing? Now, any doubts? Now, the next thing question is asked guys, what is an ETL project architecture? Or in an interview, it is asked that, can you explain your project architecture? So first of all, guys, to explain any project architecture, we have to understand the layers and then we can explain the project architecture. So these are called as layers, okay? These are called as layers. So now guys, this is a source system. This is layer one. The source system can be a flat file and Excel sheet, Excel sheet, a DV or XML. This is source. So this is layer one. Source system is nothing but your source layer is nothing but your layer one. And now from source it goes to the ODS or it is also called as the landing area. So operational operational data stored. Okay, so or landing area. So very less company uses this ODS or landing area. So this is what is a area where the data has been taken. Suppose it's a flat file is having a data or ERP or CRM is again a database where for the data are there or there is unstructured data. So guys, data are divided into uh, structured and unstructured, okay? So structured data means data in the form of tables. That is nothing but your structured data, okay? And unstructured data means guys what? There is no structure of data. That is nothing but your unstructured data like your video and your know, movies and images. This kind of data are nothing but your unstructured data. I means data are not in a, in a tabular format. There is also called a semi-structured data. That means semi-structured data means guys, Datas are structured up to certain level, like your XML file. So that is called as what are semi-structured data. That means that is structured up to a certain limit. That is nothing but you, or up to a certain extent. That is called as what? Uh, that is called a semi-structured data. So data, uh, what I am telling is, you have to understand the layers. When you explain the project architecture, this is layer one, this is source file flat file or, or any unstructured data or any databases. I told you source can be flat file, Excel file, Excel C, DB, XML, whatever the source is there. From the source, the data has been taken into ODS layer, also called as landing area. This is an optional layer. And in this minimal testing will be done. Minimal testing means what? Like your guys, your quality check will be done. Quality check means what? Basic check. Suppose the name of employee should start with the first letter as capital. So this kind of check will be done in what? In the ODS layer or the landing area. ODS full form is operational data store. After that, the data will be loaded into the staging area. In the staging area, there will be some kind of testing like quality check. Suppose there is a no underscore no unnecessary null values are there or these kind of very, very basic checks will be done in the staging area, okay? So suppose the uh, unnecessary null values are not there, there's no underscore there. So these kind of checks will be done in your staging area. Now, from the staging area, the data goes into the data warehouse where actual business logic transformation will happen. So actual transformation logic will be tested in the, in the data warehouse, like rounding of the data. Or I can tell you some business logic, some business logic is there. Business logic means 
a particular set of rules are given. For example, salary should be increased by 10%. That means sal plus sal into 0.1. Now this particular salary should be loaded into the data warehouse. So that is a particular business logic which will be tested and which will be loaded into this data warehouse. So there are three layers, guys. First is the source system. It can be flat file, XML, and Excel, and database, all those things. Next is ODS or landing area. And there will be very, very basic check I told you, like uh, your, uh, your uh, letter should be, name of the letter should be first letter. This basic check is done in ODS or landing area. This is an optional area. Most of the company does not keep this ODS. They directly keep from the source to the staging. In the staging area, the minimum checks are done. Like there should not be any null value. There should not be any underscore or unnecessary data. That is nothing but your staging area. And from staging area to the data warehouse where the actual business transformation will be checked. And in this, the actual transformation means actual logic, business logic. Suppose the salary needs to be increased by 10%, 20%. This is one of an example, or the number should be rounded off from the source and loaded into the target. That particular testing can be done in this data warehouse. From data warehouse, the data gets loaded into the data mart. From data mart, the data gets loaded into the actual BI layer. BI layer is nothing but your business intelligence report. That report format, we can see the data. And then from the BI report, the end user can check the data. Data Mart is a subset of uh, data warehouse. We can tell it is a more of the more of the particular subject related. A particular subject, if I take that, can be considered as a data mart. Suppose if I take a particular subject. Suppose an employee is working in a company. Now I have to track that particular employee, employee working hours. So tracking system can be one particular data mart. Or suppose security can be one particular data mart. Safety can be one particular data mart. If it is a very, very subject related, it's a part of data warehouse. Then from data warehouse, which is a centralized location from here, we further divide into data mart, a subset of data warehouse, we can tell it. All the properties of data warehouse is in the data mart, but it is related to a particular subject. Particular subject means an employee is getting tracked. So that particular tracking can be one particular data mart. And, and uh, the safety features of uh, what is our company is having. So that can be considered as a particular data mart. The security features, can be considered as a data mart. The HR policies can be considered as a data mart if it is an employee-based organization. So these are nothing but a subject-oriented uh, data warehouse, which is called as data mart. And from data mart, data is going into the reports. And these reports are visible to the end users and also the high people, high in the sense, high ranking, People in an organization can view these reports. Uh, suppose how many employees left this particular job, how many employees are maintaining the scheduled uh, date, working hours, all those things can be tracked by the business uh, or for, for a particular product, how much sales is happening, which product is not giving that much profit. These kind of particular analysis can be done by the top management of the company. And then based on that, they take the decisions. That is what is the BI layer. It's also called as presentation layer. This is nothing but your BI report. And finally, the end user starts using the particular BI report. So guys, whenever a project is asked for a candidate, first he has to explain the project architecture. He has to tell what data has been taken from the source. My source was a database. From database, you tell what? You don't tell ODS and landing. Most of the company follows staging. You tell data has been taken from the source, loaded into the staging area. From staging area, the data got loaded into the data warehouse. 
from data warehouse, the data got loaded into data mart. From data mart, the data got loaded into the BI reports. As an ETL tester, I have to check the data from the source to the staging area. Source to staging, we did the very, very basic check where we check the data cleansing activities. I can tell data cleansing is data cleaning activities. Like there should not be any unnecessary uh, repetition of data or there should not be any null value or capital later, the name should be there. This kind of basic check we did in the staging area. Now the actual transformation we checked for in the data warehouse. Now, this is the second layer of testing. This is the first layer source to staging I have checked. Now what happened guys after staging, the second layer of data we are checking is from the staging to the data warehouse. This here we will check the actual business logic and everything like the salary should be increased by 10% or de decreased by 10% or whatever business logic is there. This is layer two testing this is the actual business transformation logic based on the source to mapping document. This particular uh, testing is done. After that, the data is got getting loaded to the data mart and then the data is getting loaded, uh, loaded to the BI reports. So the testing will be done into two parts on a high level. If I tell first from source to the data warehouse and next testing will be done from the data warehouse to the reports. So two kinds of testing as an ETL tester we have to do. What are the two kinds of testing? First, we need to check the data from source to data warehouse. And next is what we need to check the data from data warehouse to the report. These two points make it clear. What we are explaining is data migration project data migration project data migration means what data is moving from one layer to another layer data is migrated from one layer to the other layer that is why it is called as data migration project in data migration project whenever someone asks you if you have worked as an etl tester explain your project what you have to tell is data is coming from the source system now it is going into the staging area from the staging area it is going into the data warehouse from data warehouse is going to the data mart and from data mart it is going to the bi report we have tested the application from the source to the data warehouse this is part one testing part two testing is from the data warehouse we have tested the data in the reports so this is part two testing from the data warehouse to the reports the part one is from source to data warehouse part two is from data warehouse to report now what are the testing we will do how can we do the testing? What are the possible test cases? What are the possible test scenarios? What are the possible bugs? All those things we are going to learn. As of now, I have made you competent that when you attend any interview with respect to ETL testing, your concept should be completely clear. Everyone will ask you, what is your project? So whenever an ETL project is asked, you have to tell I was working in a data migration project where data is getting loaded from source to staging to the data warehouse to the data mart and finally to the BI report. I have tested the data from the source to the data warehouse and then I have tested the data from the data warehouse to the BI report. We are going to learn a document called as STM. It is called as source to mapping document, also called as STTM, source to target mapping document. Either it is called as STM document or it's also called as STTM document. So guys, we are going to learn something called as STM document, also called as STTM document. Source to target document or source source to target document. So this is source to target document is also called as STM document or STTM document. Both the names are different, but the thing is same. This is STM document guys. There's something called a source system. 
and there is something called as source entity. Entity means this is the source particular, uh, which are the particular source tables. These are the source column and their source data type. This is the transformation logic. This is the target guys. And this is the target column. This is target column data type and it nullable and the comments, okay? This is called as what guys, the particular source to target mapping document. So in source, there will be source data and target will be target data. Suppose this is a particular source system. This is a particular source, which is nothing but your, source is nothing but your table. The table name is DL campaign offer. This particular source column campaign initiative type. Now, this particular column, the data type is varchar 100. And this is what straight pull, also called as straight load. Also called as one to one mapping. So, guys, this straight pull, straight load one to one mapping is nothing but there is no transformation done whenever there is no transformation done that is nothing but your straight pull straight load or one to one mapping this is a source table name source column name source data type this is a transformation logic which is scaling is a straight pull straight load one to one mapping that means there is no transformation done this is the transfer or this is the target table. This is the target column and the target column data type, whatever the data type, the target column is, suppose it is a where pair, 100 only, fine. And is that column nullable? No. Is there any comments required? The person can put, if don't, they want, don't want to put the comments, they can write as it as not applicable. This is source to target mapping document. This is very, very important document. Every ETL tester is completely doc, uh, dependent on source to target mapping document. Everyone should know what is a source to mapping document. So there is something called as a target table. There's something called as source table. There are other sources also. What is full load, incremental load? This we will discuss later. As of now, just understand what is a target table? This is a target table. These are the source table. This is a, a source system. This is a particular uh, source uh, table. This is the source column. This is a source column data type. This is state pool, state load, or one to one mapping. This is target table. This is target column. And if nullable, and any comments are there. Again, guys, like that. This is a source uh, 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 table, uh, source particular table okay this is a source column and this is a, a data type of the source and this is a state pool that means there will not be any changes similarly there's a target co column target table target column and target column data type and all those things are there next is similarly guys still here if you see it is a source table this is a particular source column. This is a particular source column data type. This is a particular transformation, which is state pool, state load, one-to-one, -one, target table, target column, target column data type, nullable comments. Now, guys, but when you see this particular source, this is very interesting. Now, here there are multiple tables. This is table one, this is table two, this is table three. Now, source system is having three tables. Now, these are the columns coming. Now, if you see, this is a particular columns which are coming from the source system. So, this particular table, dct.customer account key means this particular column is coming from which table? From DL campaign target table dco.campaign cd that means it is coming from this source table and dm higher nm that means this is coming from this particular this particular table like that that means there are three source target table and what happened guys there are these many one two three four five uh, source column the all these columns are having their data types there's something called as integer, where care, care, numeric. Integer is like number only. 
And then there's something called as transformation logic. This is what I was telling. What is the transformation logic? So this is a particular transformation logic. After this transformation logic, what happens? Data from all these three source system, all these five uh, source column are getting loaded into the target table, target column name, their data type, nullable or not, and their comments. So this is what is actually the transformation logic. The transformation logic is the most complex part in ETL testing. And we are going to learn all the kinds of transformation logic. It can be an aggregate transformation, sorter transformation, lookup transformation, joiner transformation, all those transformation logic we are going to learn. There are some business transformation, some business logic also based on which the data from the source will be loaded into the target. Suppose this is a particular transformation logic and based on this, what happened, the data from the source is getting loaded into the target. Now we have to test what the data from the source source table, source column is matching to the target table columns. That means what guys, the, this particular target table, this particular target column is having the data as per the transformation logic from the source table, source column. All these things will be taught to you and how the transformation logic is tested, what are the ways we test a transformation logic, how an ETL testing is done, all those things we'll be teaching. As of now, we are trying to understand what is a STM document. So in STM document, there is something called a source table, source column, source data type, transformation logic, transformation, uh, yeah, uh, target table, target column, target column data type, nullable or not and any comment if required. Now, similarly guys, if I go here, uh, here again, there are three um, source table, all the source column, their data type, their transformation logic, target table, target column, target column data type, nullable comments. Similarly, here also, here also, here also. Similarly, there are a lot of, a lot of, Yes, source table, source column, source column data type, transformation logic, target table, target column, target column data type, and transformation, uh, target column data type and nullable, and then comments if required. This is called as source to target mapping document. So is it clear, guys, what is a source to target mapping document? It will consist of source table, column data type, transformation logic, and target table, column, and its data type and if any comments are required or if the column is nullable or not, all those kind of information. 